The story of the Sisters Servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, or the IHMs as they are often called, is a story of God's powerful grace at work in the hearts of some extraordinary people, namely Father Louis Florent Gillet, Mother Teresa Maxis, and the first IHM Sisters. To begin the story, we meet Father Louis Florent Gillet. Father Gillet was an enthusiastic young Catholic priest from Belgium who became a member of the missionary religious congregation known as the Redemptorists in 1833. The mission of the Redemptorists, given to them by their founder, St. Alphonsus Liguori, can be heard in their name. The Redemptorists helped to spread God's redeeming love to all God's people, most especially the spiritually abandoned and the poor. In the spirit of St. Alphonsus Liguori, Father Gillet, on fire with the desire to begin real missionary work, was sent to America and traveled by boat to the United States in 1843. He lived in a Redemptorist rectory near St. James Parish in Baltimore, Maryland, where he proved to be a quick learner of English. Of course, he was already fluent in French, his native language, as well as German and Flemish. In addition to celebrating Mass in the parish, for a short time, Father Gillet also became the chaplain and instructor for a community of sisters in Baltimore. These sisters were the Oblate Sisters of Providence, the first community of African-American sisters in the United States. The primary ministry of the Oblate Sisters, a largely French-speaking community at that time, was education. They were especially attentive to the children of refugees from Haiti who had to leave their country because of political unrest. Little did Father Gillet realize that his brief association with these sisters would have historical consequences. Next, we meet the second extraordinary person in the IHM story, Mother Teresa Maxis. Mother Teresa was born as Mary Maxis and her life unfolded in this way. Her mother, Anne-Marie Maxis, was born in Haiti in 1783. She lost her parents at a young age in the midst of the revolution in her home country. Anne-Marie, along with the Duchemin family and several other Haitian people, managed to escape the violence. Anne-Marie was adopted by the Duchemins, her mother's relatives, and taken to Baltimore. When Anne-Marie gave birth to her daughter, Mary, the Duchemins adopted her, too, and cared for her like a daughter. Mary never really knew her father, a British lieutenant. In 1829, Mary was enrolled as a boarding student and received an excellent education from the Oblate Sisters of Providence. At age 19, she asked to join the Oblate Sisters and became the fourth member of the Oblate community. In religious life, she became known as Sister Mary Teresa. Now, it just so happened that while Father Gillet was in Baltimore in 1843, there was a special meeting of all the bishops in the United States taking place at the same time. The main topic of the meeting was the need for Catholic schools. Bishop Peter Paul Lefebvre of the Diocese of Detroit, Michigan, was one of the bishops who attended the meeting. He was very interested in having some Redemptorist priests come to his diocese, especially to minister to the mostly French-speaking population. This was a perfect fit for French-speaking Father Gillet, and so he and a few other Redemptorist companions made their way to Monroe, Michigan. When Father Gillet arrived in Monroe, 
He was greatly distressed about the lack of faith-based schools. This serious problem would become his mission. When he could not find financial help or any sisters to begin a Catholic school, he thought and prayed long and hard. Finally, inspired by the Holy Spirit, he came to this momentous decision. If I cannot find a religious community, I shall organize one. Father Gelais set out to do just that. In the late spring of 1843, Father Gelais met Therese Renault, a 21-year-old young woman who lived in the small Michigan town of Gross Point. Therese, along with her sister, kept their little mission church in good order always ready for the visit of an occasional missionary priest. Therese secretly possessed a deep desire to devote her heart and her life to the service of God. She had never even seen a religious sister, but Father Gelet recognized in her the signs of a vocation. He confided to her his dream of beginning a new religious community and taught her the prayer that we know as the Angelus. He asked her to pray it every day at the sound of the church bell and promised that if she would be faithful to this devotion and spread it among her neighbors, Our Lady would surely find a way of granting her heart's desire. Meanwhile, Therese prepared herself at home for the call she so eagerly awaited by prayer service, and sacrifice. Our Lady never disappoints. Therese was not quite 24 years old when Father Gelet invited her to become one of the first members of the new community of sisters he wished to begin. She would be joined by two other pioneers who came from the Baltimore community of the Oblate Sisters of Providence the very community Father Gelet had met when he was in Baltimore. When Sister Mary Teresa heard that Father Gelet was seeking to begin a new community of sisters and a frontier school, she chose to leave the Oblate Sisters. She returned to her baptismal name, Mary Maxis, and set off to pursue this new adventure in Michigan. Shortly thereafter, Another Oblate sister also decided to leave Baltimore and go to Michigan. She too returned to her baptismal name, Charlotte Schaff, and headed to Michigan. These three generous and brave women, Therese Renault, Mary Maxis, and Charlotte Schaff, would become the first three sister servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary the first three IHMs. For the first two years, this new little community was known as Sisters of Providence. However, in 1847, the name of the community was changed to Sister Servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary to reflect the sisters' desire to imitate the Blessed Mother in her openness to grace and readiness to serve. On the morning of November 10th, 1845, these three courageous women met in St. Mary Church in Monroe, Michigan to attend Mass celebrated by Father Gelet for God's guidance of this new project so dear to all of them. After Mass, Father Gelet returned to the sanctuary, offered a prayer, and then rested his stole upon the shoulder of each sister. This little ritual symbolized their cooperation in the work of the church from the very beginning, and their awareness that the mission they were embarking upon was larger than themselves. It was also a recognition of the importance of community. The group understood that what one can do well Two can do better, but a community can do best of all. So November 10, 1845, represents the birthday 
of the Sisters Servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The IHM Sisters refer to this day as Founders Day, since it marked the fulfillment of Father Gillet's dream to found a new community of sisters to serve God and God's people on the Michigan frontier. In this new community, Mary Maxis, who was 35 years old and the sister with the most experience, would become the founding superior of the new community, as well as the coordinator of the new frontier school. She became known as Mother Mary Teresa Maxis. Charlotte Schaff, who was 36 years old, became known as Sister Mary Ann. On November 30, 1845, Father Gillet privately presented the religious habit, first black in color and later changed to the now familiar blue, and a gold ring to Mary Maxis and Charlotte Schaff, who had previously professed vows in their former community. For Therese Renault, who was almost 24 years old, and the first to whom Father Gillet had spoken about his hope for forming a community of sisters, this was her first experience of religious life. Today we would say that she entered the community as a postulant, the first step in becoming a sister. When Therese became the first novice of the IHM community, which is the second step in becoming an IHM sister, she received the religious habit and her new religious name, Sister Mary Celestine. This ceremony took place in the Church of Mary Immaculate in Monroe on December 8, 1845, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. One year later, on December 8, 1846, Therese, now Sister Mary Celestine, professed the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience, the third step in becoming a sister, finally fulfilling her heart's desire. Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, is close to the heart of every IHM sister, and so from the very beginning of the community, Every sister bears Mary's name, or some title of Our Lady, together with her distinctive religious name. Mary is their special patroness and powerful intercessor in time of need. December 8th marks the major feast day of all sister servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Even today, the sisters renew their vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience on December 8th, either in their parish churches or in their convent homes. That first winter of 1845 was very harsh for these first three IHM sisters. Their first convent in school consisted of two leaky log cabins. The kitchen was actually a little shed, and next to the cooking stove there was an old cupboard where dishes were kept. On rainy days, the sisters had to go with an umbrella to take the dishes out, and they would often be sprinkled with rain in the small dining room. Kitchen utensils like forks and spoons had to be shared, since there weren't enough to go around, and not one of the sisters was really a good cook. Even with all these inconveniences, and real experiences of poverty, the sisters were very happy and lighthearted, displaying the special virtues of the IHM congregation, humility, simplicity, self-forgetfulness, and devoted charity. Amazingly, the first announcement of the new school appeared in the Monroe Journal of December 25th, Christmas Day, 1845 just one month after the sisters had arrived in Monroe. The school, a rustic log cabin, was named Young Ladies Academy. The subjects taught in the beginning included religion, with a special focus on preparation for the sacraments, reading, 
writing, and arithmetic, plus geography, grammar, history, and literature for the older children. The school opened on January 15, 1846, with 40 day students and four boarding students. The lessons were bilingual, French and English, in the first five years or so, since French was the native language of both Mother Teresa and Sister Celestine, as well as of most of the students. Many people who lived in that part of Michigan had a French-Canadian background. About five months after the new community and the new school had begun, a fourth woman came to enter the IHM congregation, Madame Gisette Godfroy Smith. She too had met Father Gillet along the way, and he had recognized in her the characteristics of a religious vocation. Upon receiving the IHM habit, Madame Gisette became known as Sister Mary Alphonsine, named in honor of St. Alphonsus Liguori, a special patron of the IHM sisters. Little by little, the community grew and the school advanced. At this time, Bishop John Newman, now St. John Newman, was the Bishop of the Diocese of Philadelphia. He also happened to be a Redemptorist priest and knew Father Gillet. When he heard about this new community of sisters in Monroe, Michigan, he wrote to Mother Teresa and asked if she could send any sisters to help teach in the schools in his very large diocese and to assist in preparing children for the sacraments. She was delighted to expand the IHM mission and sent five sisters to Pennsylvania in 1859. This was only the beginning. As time went on, the sisters received many more requests for help from many other dioceses, even from as far away as Peru and Chile in South America. From 1845 until the present time, the IHM sisters have found great joy in being with God's people in schools and parishes, religious education programs, and in the many ways they continue to serve the church. They want to share their God-given gifts with everyone they meet. These special God-given gifts are called the IHM Charism, which is made up of the virtues of love, creative hope, and fidelity. This IHM Charism becomes real when it is put into action. In addition to their Charism, the IHM sisters claim two powerful sources of spiritual strength. These are the gifts of prayer and the Holy Eucharist. St. Alphonsus Liguori, great IHM patron saint and teacher of prayer, would say that if one prays, they will not get lost. They will find their way home to God. Prayer keeps us close to God and prayer keeps God close to us. How much closer can anyone get to God than by receiving Him in Holy Communion, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist? This is why the IHM sisters say that the Holy Eucharist is the center and animating force of their lives. Today, the IHM sisters continue to welcome new members, young women, who are as adventurous as those first three pioneer sisters and who desire to give their lives over to God and to the service of God's people. May many more generous young women hear God's call and take their places in the remarkable IHM story, along with Father Gillet, Mother Teresa Maxis, and the first IHM sisters. <laughs>